Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Alternative Design's presentation of You Can't Skip Second Base. I'm Tim Harding, Chief Marketing Officer for Alternative Design and uh, once again thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, you know, we were off to a great start this summer. You had a, a marvelous June. We appreciate the business, so thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I've never seen better products on our platform than, than we've had in the past month, and uh, next month uh, looks to be even better. Uh, as usual, uh, if you have questions during the course of today's presentation, uh, feel free to go ahead and type them into the chat box on your control panel uh, at, uh, at any time. And as normal, I will respond to all the questions at the end of the presentation. And if uh, you come up with more questions, I'll respond to more. Uh, you know, we're in between offerings right now. We just closed out the month of June. And as I said, you, you guys kept pouring the business in. So thank you so much for that. Um, but we don't have a product on our platform right now. And frankly, uh, with the 4th of July being uh, next week, uh, I'm not sure when the banks are going to come out with their new offerings. If we're fortunate, we'll have them out uh, by a week from today, and I'll be able to roll out at least some of, if not all, of the products for the month of July uh, next Wednesday. Um, but if not, we'll figure out how to work around the holiday. Uh, this presentation today is going to be a little bit shorter uh, than, than uh, typical. Uh, I'm probably going to keep it down to about 20 minutes, and we're going to talk about uh, you can't skip second base. And really, all I want to cover today is, is just kind of do a review of the case submission process. Uh, so that, that process is a little bit different than submitting an annuity. And I think from time to time, it, it doesn't hurt uh, to just review the steps uh, so that they're fresh in your minds for that case you're going to write next month. Uh, you know, I came up with the idea for this webinar because uh, when my kids were little, uh, I coached t-ball. Well, I coached uh, <laughs> baseball for quite a while, but starting with t-ball. And the interesting thing about coaching t-ball as, as opposed to coaching uh, at the higher levels is they know nothing. They know nothing. They don't know how to hold the bat. Uh, they don't know how to swing the bat. They don't know how to field the ball. And they don't know how to run the bases. And, you know, I had this one kid who knew absolutely nothing. He was totally clueless, like he'd never seen a baseball game in his life. And I was working really hard with him to explain, you know, how you run the bases when you hit the ball and so forth. And he was enthusiastic. And I had a great time with him. And at one point in the game, he finally he hit the ball. And, of course, it bounced around off of gloves and off of legs. And eventually, it ended up in the glove of the second baseman standing by second base. Well, my player ran to first because he knew that's what he was supposed to do when he was safe there. But he knew the objective was to advance around the bases as far as he could. But he also knew that if he ran to second base... The kid was waiting there with the ball and he'd be out. So my player is always thinking. He decides he's going to skip second base and run straight to third, where he was safe. At least he thought he was. <laughs> but he wasn't safe because the umpire then had to call him out because he missed second base. and got t Even if you're tagged on third base, if you miss second, you're out. Uh, and so the poor kid had to go back to the dugout totally confused uh, because he thought he had done everything right. Unfortunately, he missed a step, and it caused <laughs> an outcome that was less than desirable for him. Well, you know, we find that happens occasionally uh, in the case submission process uh, because it is different uh, from the way that you uh, submit an annuity. And so uh, you can't skip second base. We're going to have to touch all the bases for things to go smoothly, and our objective uh, with helping you through this process is to get you paid as soon as possible because those of you who've had the unfortunate experience of not having everything uh, lined up and ready to go at the closing date for the month uh, have had the unfortunate experience of having to roll over that business to the following month which just delays you getting paid as, as well as potentially uh, giving the, the client some additional time to reconsider and perhaps have buyer's remorse. So. Uh, we want this to go as smoothly as possible. We've streamlined the process uh, as much as we possibly can. And so I just want to take a few minutes uh, today to, to walk you through it. First of all, uh, as with most things, everything that you need for this process can be found on the ADIS website uh, behind the agent portal. 
So the first thing you're going to do if you have a potential case is go into the website, go into the agent portal, and you want to click on the category process. Once you're in that process section, you're going to be able to download the applications. There are only two applications, one for qualified money, one for non-qualified money. Uh, and the other thing that's in there that you should definitely download uh, is the case submission process. It's a one-page explanation of what you need to do step by step. Now the applications themselves are relatively simple, especially compared to what you have to do to sell a fixed index annuity nowadays. And you know, I, I go back far enough that I remember my first uh, FIA application was actually on the back page, one page, on the back side of a trifold brochure talking about the features of the product. Uh, now it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, like what, 50, 60 pages, or at least it seems like that, with all sorts of disclosures. The good news on the market link CDs is the non-qualified app is only four pages and pretty simple to fill out. But once you've studied that application, if you have any questions, that's what our business consultants are here for. That's who you should call immediately. Uh, if you have a question about what should go into a box, where or how you should say something. So filling out the application is not that complex of an endeavor, uh, but there are a couple questions that do arise from time to time, and your business consultant can certainly help you with that. The case submission process page spells everything out step by step, and I strongly urge you to uh, download this, especially with your first case, uh, wouldn't hurt with your second or third case, and just have your assistant or you, if you submit the cases yourselves, uh, follow this roadmap. You can't skip second base, so uh, you're going to have to do this step by step to make things go smoothly and to ensure that you get paid as promptly as possible on the cases. So let's take a, a little bit closer look uh, at the process. Uh, step one, you've got the application. Uh, what you need to do is fax the application into us. And depending on the, uh, the client, you're going to do uh, slightly different things. Along with a copy of the application, in a cash account, you're going to send in the non-qualified application, a copy of the client ID, a picture ID, driver's license, of course, is perfectly acceptable, and a copy of the check. For a joint account, Again, the non-qualified application, but this time signed by both clients and get both clients' IDs and a copy of the check. Uh, for a corporate account or a homeowners association, for example, uh, again, you use the non-qualified application, but it's signed by the authorized signer, probably a designated officer of the corporation. You want to get that signer's uh, picture ID, a corporate resolution author authorizing the, the purchase of the MLCD, and of course the check. On qualified money, if you have an IRA account uh, with a check, uh, you want to take the uh, qualified application, again the client ID, picture ID, the check, and a rollover certification, which is included in the application. Now if it's an IRA transfer or a direct rollover, uh, you need the qualified application, the client ID, and then the incoming transfer slash rollover form. Uh, a copy of the statement for the account the client would like to transfer to Provident. And uh, this is not complicated compared to what you're doing with FIA uh, applications, uh, but it is important that all of these steps are followed. Because what we want to do is make sure that uh, <laughs> you make it home uh, safely. So what you do is you're going to fax that uh, material to us. We're going to review it here for completeness, and suitability. So if we find something in error on the application, uh, normally you'll be notified with, within three hours uh, if we get the application during normal business hours, Pacific Coast time. Uh, you'll be notified within three hours if the application is, is complete and ready to go, uh, or if there's something that needs to be corrected on it. Now remember, you've faxed the copies to us, you still have the original in your possession. So if there is something that needs to be corrected on the application, it's very easy to do so because you have the application right there. Uh, it is not necessary for your clients to initial or re-sign in the vast majority of cases. 
Uh, you can simply make the modifications uh, yourself before you proceed to uh, second base. By the way, this guy here, this is an actual picture uh, of an umpire by the name of Bill Clem. Uh, Bill Clem is famous in, in baseball history for inventing the safe and out hand signs <laughs> that, are, uh, that are used all over baseball today. I just thought it was interesting that I could actually find a photograph of the guy. Okay, once you've faxed the information uh, into us here at Alternative Design, uh, you'll receive an email from us uh, telling you whether something needs to be added or corrected. Uh, and you also receive an email if everything is in good order. So now you're safe at first and uh, your coach is going to come over and tell you it's time to think about the stealing second base. So the email will instruct you what the next steps are to take. Step, no, step number two is to send the package to Provident Trust, not to Alternative Design. Uh, send it to Provident Trust. But you do not take step number two until you have completed all of the steps in step number one. Okay, so once we make sure everything is ready to go, everything is clean, it's at that point that you're going to forward the originals uh, onto Provident Trust. And we strongly recommend that you use FedEx or UPS uh, to send that material to Provident. The only time we've ever lost a check in this process was when the check was sent uh, through the U.S. Postal Service. So we want, you, we want to urge you very strongly. In fact, I wouldn't even take a chance. I would just say it must be uh, sent FedEx or UPS uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, it does not need to be sent overnight if you have enough time between the time you send it off and the closing date. Uh, you can send it two-day or, or whatever their less expensive uh, procedures are, uh, but you do need to send it uh, FedEx or UPS uh, for a very, very good reason. You get a tracking number. Now, if you send it off by FedEx or UPS, you're now safe at second. Uh, but to get to third base, uh, we need a tracking number for that package. And you're going to take that tracking number and you're going to email it back to us at uh, info at adisusa.net. This is important because this will give us proof of delivery. So in the highly unlikely event that Provident misplaces anything, uh, we have the facsimile copies uh, of the application, the direction of investment, a copy of the check, and because of the tracking number, we will also have, and you will have, proof of delivery. Uh, this will enable us to go ahead and complete the transaction even in the highly unlikely event that Provident has misplaced the check uh, or <laughs> can't find the paperwork. Uh, it's never happened, but uh, this is a safety net that we want to have in there. Uh, the post office uh, can't do this in the same way. They, they you know, make noises like they're just as efficient at this, but generally speaking, uh, they are simply not up to par with, with FedEx or UPS. So you get the tracking number, email it to us uh, here at adisusa.net, uh, and uh, that'll give us proof of delivery uh, and we'll be ready to go. Uh, the process, case submission process uh, form also you know, gives you some general information, uh, points out that MLCDs can be purchased with taxable money or inside of an IRA, Roth, SEP, uh, DB, uh, Uniform Gift to Minors Act, UTMA, or covered all plans. Uh, the checks should always be made out to Provident Trust, FBO, for the benefit of, uh, the client's name, or uh, in the alternative, if the check is made out to your client, uh, it can be endorsed over to Provident Trust on the back. Of course, you know our minimum case size is, is $25,000, uh, but once that account is open and there is $25,000 in there, uh, existing clients can purchase additional CDs in $1,000 increments. Another thing that I find very useful uh, with the uh, case submission process form uh, is it gives you some good information on Provident Trust and uh, it's uh, quite common that your client has never used a custodian 
uh, before to hold uh, electronic evidence uh, of a CD. Uh, so it's important to at least know some basic things about Provident Trust. Uh, they're a full-service trust company, independent, uh, founded in 2004, so you know, they're on their 10-year uh, anniversary here. They have over 10,000 accounts representing over $3 billion of client assets. And they're licensed, uh, regulated, uh, and in good standing with the uh, State of Nevada Department of Business and Industry, uh, Division of Financial Institutions. I'm no expert on trust companies, but what I am told is that the uh, regulatory uh, requirements in the state of Nevada for trust companies uh, are among the strict, strictest in, in the nation. Uh, now what your client is doing is opening a self-directed uh, custodial account at Provident Trust. Provident Trust does not charge them anything for the first year, as long as at least 50% of your client's assets are on deposit with Provident Trust uh, or are deposited into MarketLink CDs. In other words, uh, don't move a $500,000 account over to Provident Trust, put $25,000 into a CD, and expect Provident to waive the fees. That's kind of uh, <laughs> gaming the system, so to speak. Uh, so as long as at least 50% of the assets that you move are put into MarketLink CDs, uh, there is no custodial charge uh, for the first year. And subsequent to that, uh, Provident will charge a, a very nominal $50 a year uh, beginning in the second year. But it's important to note that this fee is not going to be coming out of your client's principal and they're not going to get billed for it. Uh, it's only deducted from interest uh, that is actually paid uh, to your client. So this, all this information uh, is taken directly from uh, the case submission process form uh, that I suggested that you download at the beginning. Now, this is a very, very important uh, piece for, for many of you. I mentioned at the beginning that uh, this process doesn't work in the same manner, precisely the same manner as an FIA. Uh, there is no such thing as agent of record uh, because what your client is actually doing is opening a self-directed custodial trust account. That means they have access to the information, but you as the agent uh, do not. It's not your account and you're not what's called in the insurance industry an agent of record. So in order for you to service your, your client, um, in order for you to have access to information on this account directly, uh, you'll have to include one additional form uh, in that application. And it's found in the same place as everything else, uh, under process, uh, behind our agent portal. And the title of the form is the Agent Authorization Form. And this is just one more page to add to the initial application. Uh, very simple. Uh, the account owner signs it, uh, you sign it, uh, and send it in. I, we strongly recommend that if you want to have access to the account, uh, you be sure and, and send this in with the initial paperwork. In the event that something happened and you didn't get the agent authorization form signed on an account that uh, you and the, the uh, client would like to have access to, uh, you can always go back at a later date. Again, it's going to take another signature, but you can always go back uh, at a later date and have the form signed and, and submit that to Provident, and uh, that will then give you access. Uh, so the agent authorization form, uh, very important for uh, anyone who want, any agent uh, who wants to have access to the, uh, the client's information at Provident. And then, of course, the final step, uh, coming home to score, uh, is uh, once the offering closes, once the trade date passes, once the final disclosure documents uh, are published and you're made aware of those through an email, uh, it is your duty uh, to deliver those final disclosure documents to your client. Of course, the final disclosure documents have information in them that's going to be critical uh, down the road. It's going to have, among other things, the initial share price on whatever the reference shares are, uh, it's going to have the final caps, uh, information that your clients are, are going to want to know and that you're going to want to know uh, a year from now when you're doing an annual review so that you can compare back to that initial share price. Uh, and then once we've completed all those steps, uh, it's payday and, and uh, you, you've stolen home. So that's just a quick overview uh, of, of the process. I know it was a review for many of you. Uh, you know, I see a number of producers on here today who know this backwards and forwards, but it never hurts to review uh, just a little short uh, coaching session uh, on uh, the case submission process. 
And uh, so with that, uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them at, at this point. I uh, don't see any questions in the chat box uh, currently, uh, but I will pause here for just a few moments and uh, give you the opportunity to type them in uh, if you have any questions that have occurred to you. Uh, just to keep chattering here while we're online, it so happens I still coach baseball. I coach uh, an adult men's team uh, here in the San Diego Adult Baseball League, and uh, we're getting ready to head into our playoffs. We are a championship caliber team, and I uh, can't tell you how much fun it is to hang around a, a bunch of older guys who are still playing a kid's game with as much enthusiasm as uh, the kids I first coached in t-ball. Okay. Uh, one question here, uh, Don says, I got in late. Uh, please uh, uh, mention the website again. Yeah, the, the, website, uh, the website is adisusa.net, and then you would go into the agent portal section uh, and into a process. Uh, Christopher was also late, and he says, I missed first base, and uh, asked for a quick recap. Uh, yeah, first base, Chris, is to uh, fax a completed copy of the application along with the appropriate documents, uh, a uh, photo ID uh, and the check. Uh, here to uh, alternative design, we review them for suitability and completeness and notify you if anything needs to be changed on the application or if you're good to go and ready to go to uh, second base, which of course is uh, sending uh, via FedEx or UPS the uh, actual uh, materials uh, to Provident Trust. Uh, Bernie asks, will we need a sign-on to access the uh, portal? Uh, yeah, Bernie, that's a sign to you. So once you're appointed with us, uh, the very first email that we send out uh, explains to you how to uh, access the agent portal. You do need a sign-on to access it. Uh, it's not available to the general public. Uh, if you want to give your uh, business consultant a, a call when we're done here, uh, they'll be happy to uh, resend that and get you up to speed so you can get on the agent portal. Uh, it's vital that you get on the agent portal. Everything is in there, uh, folks, uh, from mar marketing materials to uh, procedural materials to the disclosure documents, product grid, <laughs> every, everything uh, is in there. So if you're not getting in there right now, uh, you need to get a hold of your business consultant and make sure you're, you're set up to access it. Okay, I uh, don't see any further questions. Of course, as always, if you have additional questions, uh, feel free to contact your business consultant here at Alternative Design. Uh, they're ready to talk to you at the drop of a hat, and uh, that's what they live for. So uh, it's always nice to have an incoming call uh, with, a, with a question. So please don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us this week. I look forward to being back here next week, same time, same place, hopefully with a uh, July product launch. Thanks again for joining us. Until then, have a great week.